Hello friends, I know what you're thinking. It's about the streamers. You see, every time I hang them up, we have a few casualties. And um, I just think that the original iridescent ones are now at the end of their life. I do plan on getting more of them, but uh, for now, we're just gonna make some match and have fun with it. Also, I didn't plan to make more React videos, but here I am. And uh, that's the last thing I'm gonna say about that, because I promised that I would stop talking about it. Thank you so much for all of your support. Today I am going to be reacting to an Australian documentary called Lolita Japanese Subculture of Doll Costumes. Blech. That title pains me a little bit, but hopefully it won't be as bad as it sounds. This, the person who sent me this says that the title card at the start of the documentary is The Secret Life of Lolitas, which they assume they took from deer stalkers and I don't like that they took their title because they already have a series called that it's not like an actual documentary but it's like a spoof but still like come on just come up with your own name and I don't like that the title is like clickbaity doll costumes stop associating us with dolls anyways let's jump into this don't know if it's gonna be good or bad thank you by the way for sending me this and let's just go if you are interested in watching the original documentary in its entirety without my commentary, there is a direct link to the source video at the top of my description. Do other documentaries just like open with Lolita shoes? I feel like that's become some sort of like Lolita trope. Or have I seen this before? I don't know. It is a lifestyle and it is quite shocking to people who aren't accustomed to this very secretive sort of subculture. It's like you're a member of an exclusive society. It is kind of like leading a double life. The reason we do this in secret is so that, you know, our mom doesn't find out. Why are they opening this documentary with everything being a secret? Why is it like some exclusive... I am not in a cult. Society, you know, <laughs> cult like, ooh, very exclusive. That's, I don't... I don't like that. I don't like that opening. I'm only 25 seconds in, so maybe it's gonna change. And I don't blame that on the Lolitas in this. That's, I think, the direction of whoever's making this documentary. They are asking them these things to prompt them to reply in this way. Fine. These two are so cute. I remember seeing photos of them at this. I remember seeing these chords in a photo together and they're so cute and so creative. For her, if she just doesn't see it, she won't investigate it. That's so sad. I've had so many friends over the years whose parents don't understand Lolita or don't accept it and they have to hide it from them and it sucks, but like do what you gotta do to wear it, to express yourself, to feel safe. I'm getting my fake LaCroix. It really clashes with my coordinates. <laughs> Why do I care about this? What? What is with this leg shot? This is literally like between someone's legs! <laughs> ah! I don't know, this just makes me really uncomfortable and it, like you see it really quickly. I feel like there's just so many better ways to have shown this like from farther away or from a downward angle rather than like through their legs. They're so cute! <laughs> I love these two. I don't know their names. I hope they'll introduce us to them. I hope that I can find their Instagrams. I feel like they quit Lolita. I might be wrong. Lolitas are born out of Harajuku district in Japan. Correct. The subcultures are often described as living dolls. <laughs> the subcultures are often misdescribed as living dolls. They're often described by outsiders as living dolls, but not by Lolita's. Stop with the dolls. Ah, okay, she is, she was part of Deer Stalkers or she made videos with Deer Stalkers. She's like so informative and just full of knowledge. And she used to make a kawaii school with Deer Stalkers and like talk about the history of Lolita and different, why it's called Lolita and, and things like that. I really wish that there were more videos of her because she is so 
knowledgeable. See, look, much better shot of bottom skirt shoes detail. Even if that leg shot was out of focus more. I think that's primarily why we don't see a lot of the leaders out on the street these days. It's because it's just not, it's just not safe. I've had a number of guys wanting to have sexual relations with me, specifically saying that they wanted me to wear Lolita to look like a little girl. This is all correct and these experiences are very valid. I've definitely experienced this, unfortunately, and I think that the worst experience I've had with this was someone who I was casually seeing who told me that they understood what Lolita was, that they respected it, that they appreciated it, and just from this really like understanding place and then later on brought up that they wanted to have sex with me in it and how it really turned them on and I was like I thought that you understood that that's not what I'm into uh it hurt much more because that person I thought respected me and they didn't what the f I am so thankful for my wonderful girlfriend who understands Breaks online. We used to have open forums on places like Live Journal until um, some very creepy people tried to gay crash our meets. What was that about? The Australian Lolita community is one of the largest outside of Japan. There's now a growing number of men known as bro leaders in the subculture here. So, the term bro leader has a negative connotation. If you want to go by the term brolita, that's fine, but that's your own thing. It's not a term for everyone. Please don't just call people brolitas <laughs> because you could hurt someone's feelings. You might misgender them. You might make them feel alienated. It's not good. If you wear a lolita, you're a lolita, no matter what gender you are. People generally think we're weird, strange, or freaks. Maladjusted. Well, no, no, Lonnie, I wouldn't go that oh, far. Right. <laughs> They're so cute. <laughs> They're like bickering. I love it. Most of the things that brolitas like me do are the same as most lolitas would do. When I'm dolling up, I feel more connected because it's a way of representing who I am on the inside. When Tilly turned to the side, um and said when they're dolling up just the look on their face and the way that this phrase was said i feel like the producer got them to say it that way it seems like a producer was like can you repeat that but can you explain or the producer led with can you tell us about when you're dolling up so then tilly felt the pressure to use dolling up you guys are like probably so over me nitpicking doll terms but stop Nope. This shot is so beautiful! This shot is so pretty! I first met Fanti online through an online low leader community. I kind of- It was CGL, wasn't it? The hesitation in the voice. Uh, online community? <laughs> Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was live journal, but I just think that the pause in the voice was suspicious. We had a lot in common very smart and she's really beautiful so, and i just kind of knew that we needed to be together is this couple still together the thing about this watching this is it was made in 2015 i'm more curious about where they all are now where are they now in this moment i was assuming that everyone in this doc would all kind of be public figures and be on Instagram and such, but I did reach out to the community and I was able to talk to most of the leaders in this documentary, and most of them wanted to remain anonymous or not be involved with any update because they're not public figures or they don't have an online presence that they wish to share, which is totally understandable and totally fine. They were just interviewed for a documentary. They are not in this line of work. So I hope that everyone is respectful of their privacy. I do have a few statements that I will share at the end of this video. Did the uh, male Lolitas like have any backlash after this came out? Like, were their, were their families okay? Um, is this couple still together? Uh, so many questions. So even though I didn't see him in pants until the third time we met in person, you know, I saw through it, you know, like to me the dress didn't matter. 
that's so interesting because I feel like a lot of Lolitas will meet people outside of Lolita and then there's this whole big thing about having to like share with their partner Lolita and like will they accept it and like have to explain it all and go through it all. And so this is really cool that they met in Lolita. I don't know, that's just so cool to me. Those parasols are so cute. They're so good. They're so nice. They're so fluffy and frilly. You're in one of our Lolita houses. They probably put this together like this meetup for the video to film everybody together. But this, the way that it's lit in this room that they chose is kind of bare. It looks like it's set up for an intervention. <laughs> we saw the boxes from your shopping service. Stop it, get some help. I think you've got a problem. They're like, I saw you coordinate angelic pretty and baby star shine bright together. I own and operate a shop called Chiffon Rose. I'm the only online retailer that has such a broad collection of items. Does this shop still exist? I definitely used to follow this Lolita, or maybe I just saw her on like Daily Lolita Tumblr or Daily Lolita Live Journal. She looks so familiar. The shop has changed their name to Mulberry Chronicles, and I believe the Lolita has kind of combined her personal Instagram with her shop and that's also Mulberry Chronicles and you can see their products as well as some of her coordinates. They have some really cute stuff. I definitely recommend checking them out. Unfortunately, our, our mum is not so convinced about the style. She doesn't want us to be pretty so cute. cute. Let's go to high tea. I have definitely changed in Lolita in all different places and not because uh, my family doesn't approve or anything. I'm really thankful that my, my parents do approve and I don't even live with them so it doesn't really affect me, but uh, traveling, just traveling, you know, for events sometimes you don't have time to like make it to the hotel room, maybe your hotel room isn't ready yet and yet you have to be somewhere and so like I have this memory of going to a, a Mexican event in Tijuana. This was when I lived in California, we drove down across the border and then we got there and our hotel room wasn't ready and there was a bunch of Lolitas in the um, lobby just like hanging out all ready to go and I like walked in disgusting like just t-shirt like sweaty hair no makeup was like hi <laughs> and then went into the hotel bathroom and like opened my suitcase and frantically got ready and I remember trying to like glue press on nails and I was like getting it all over my hands and I was just like <laughs> and then I came back out and was like Hey <laughs> guys, I'm gonna shout out some kind of sexual innuendo or something highly inappropriate To be honest as someone who's worn Lolita for 10 plus years has gone out in public tons of times the amount of people saying nice things outweighs the bad thing. Not just because I live in Canada too. <laughs> people have said nasty things in Canada and people have said really nice things in California and in other places that I've traveled to. Like, holy sh Walking around Pittsburgh, people were so nice. We had the nicest conversation with like a police officer and like random guys that I did not expect. So just want to put it out there because this doc is kind of painting it in a way of like the Lolita community is so exclusive and secretive because they have to be because everyone is so mean to them which like isn't true <laughs> the Lolita community isn't exclusive anyone can join just learn up on Lolita just build your own coordinate get involved message the moderators people aren't so horrible <laughs> yeah you will encounter people that say dumb things but a lot of the times people are just confused and so they'll accidentally say dumb things i don't think that everyone out there has malicious intent wait 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 that headdress is so cute this was important to uh scroll back to you know i wish we could be a more accepting society and just let people be different. I think the leader subculture in Australia is just going to get bigger. Maybe one day we'll have our own convention. Just want to put it out there that if the Australian community ever has a Lolita event, I would love to be a guest and film it. Uh, my roommate is playing Bass Hunter right now, and I don't know if my mic is going to pick it up. 
I think to everyone who misjudges us or has misconceptions about Lolita subculture, Coco Chanel sums up our sentiments perfectly. I don't care what you think about me. I don't think about you at all. I love that. I love the way that they ended it so much. I'm really curious about where all of these people are now. I'm really interested in more about the Australian community. I want to know because it was so active at that time and I don't know if it still is. At least it was being documented a lot at that time, so it might still be active but not really being documented. I really enjoyed the documentary overall. I didn't like that they took an approach that was like, this is a secret world and we're looking in- like I get why they did it, it made it more interesting, and it is something that you don't see regularly so it does seem sort of secretive and different, but I don't know, I just feel like it still feels like you're an outsider looking in when you could have made it with the direction of like inviting people into it more. I hope for the best for all of these Lolitas. I I think that the ending really made up for the like secretive aspect and made it seem more doable and more inviting and so I really liked that. And the shots were so beautiful! So chef kiss beautiful! Uh, yeah. Anyways. My original approach to this was to interview each of the people shown in the documentary and I was assuming because they were in a documentary that they would all be public figures and want to be involved but I found that most of them didn't want to be involved or wanted to remain anonymous, so I am taking a different approach because if I named the people who did want to be involved, you could use the process of elimination and I know people are probably going to try and creep them. Please do not. Please respect everyone's privacy. I found that everyone in the doc felt a sort of separation between the production and the community. It was mentioned a lot that the team seemed really interested in sensationalizing it. I heard from some of the people interviewed that their words were cut together from different statements to support the documentary's direction. The production seemed interested in making something shocking with intention of going viral. I have an anonymous statement that I think sums it up pretty well. Members from within the video spent about four hours worth of filming with the producer, cameraman, and an additional two hours of general discussion about Lolita fashion, culture, and community. From the airtime the blank group received, I'd like you to acknowledge and imagine just how much information was left out. We, being the community, knew a lot of it would be chopped, changed, and manipulated to be made into what they wanted. We urged the term a living doll not to be used. Overall, try to be positive about the segment, it could always have gone a lot worse. The makers of the documentary only wanted to focus on the more obscure elements and fetish assumptions. To sum it up, I would say that while the community was proud of the Lolitas for trying to speak up and share the fashion and community, they were not happy with the way SBS twisted it, which I totally agree with. Here's the thing, at the time of me editing this, there are exactly 10 comments on this video, and two of them are from the same person. This video only has about 40,000 views, which is a decent amount, but there are other Lolita documentaries with far more views because they document the lifestyle and community with less of an edge. I think that Lolita documentaries that portray the community and fashion for what it is without spinning it to be shocking or weird, will do so much better because it's a useful tool for Lolitas to share with people and help educate them on the fashion. This documentary definitely isn't the worst, but it's not something that I personally would share to educate people with. And that's my wrap-up thoughts and reaction. Stay lovely.